What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Duran and we're here to talk more Celtics basketball and this will be a weird video for me because just the simple fact that I made a video when these two were drafted Aaron Neesmith and Peyton Pritchard I was there covering their draft night and um, so now I'm making a video advocating for whether they should still remain on the roster of this team because uh, you know let's just jump into this because I'm not really sure what their role is at this point you know, and I'm of the belief that we have to make the most of every first round pick that we have. I know that, you know, as far as comparing the leagues, the MLB, the NBA, the NFL, obviously the first round picks for the NBA are not as valuable as compared to other leagues. They're just not. Um, the hit rate on making, getting a good player, a contributor in the NBA in the first round is nowhere near as high as say the NFL, the MLB, and just other leagues in general. Um, really that top one to 15 range which we call the lottery range would be where you would find you know the most contribute the players that can contribute the quickest above that so let's go ahead and talk about um you know aaron neesmith first let's talk about him you know as far as where his future is for this roster i just don't know because we've seen Ime Udoka speak about aaron neesmith and i don't think he thinks he's a good player you know just flat out i don't think that Ime Udoka finds Aaron Neesmith to be good. I mean, when he when he spoke about him, what did he say? He said, you know, I think that he has a lot of work to do to be a rotational piece for us. He doesn't think he's good. And Aaron Neesmith isn't helping that case. Um, when he goes out there, you know, rush shots, we see, you know, feet not set. We see he's trying to get the ball out of his hands as quickly as possible there's no thought there's you know it's, it's just nerves and that's it like it's there's nothing we're seeing a completely different player than what we saw in summer league in summer league we see this player that's confident we see this player that's taking his time we see this player that's setting his feet shooting the ball a little bit better and in the and when we get into the regular season games it's just skittish scared i mean he looks scared and let's be honest aaron e. smith that little looks scared he looks like he doesn't want to touch the ball he looks like he doesn't even want to be in the game and it's just everything's moving so fast for him like he's running at so fast and there's no there's no rhythm there's no you know there's no sustainability to what he's doing and and you know i find myself thinking you know this team really needs another contributor off the bench and it would be they could they could get another vet to come in here if they were to send off an Aaron E. Smith. They could. They could uh, go to the Sacramento Kings, go to the Killian Cavaliers, go to one of these struggling teams, Oklahoma City Thunder, and offer this young player and say, hey, do you have a, bet that, a vet that can be a contributor? No, pick one of their vets of their teams. Pick off like a, a Marvin Bagley that's kind of run his course in Sacramento. You can go to OKC and just pick one of their little players and see which one could contribute off your bench. You can go to like Houston and pick someone like a Eric Gordon. I don't know where Eric Gordon's at. Um, I don't know where his contract's at. And I remember last time just thinking about it off the top of my head, he got some like ridiculous contract. But you can you can try and swindle that move. Like you can go get a veteran for Aaron E. Smith. And so you have to ask yourself, is it still worth it to wait on this guy? Are you still patient enough to wait on Aaron E. Smith? Are you still patient enough to wait on Peyton Pritchard now at this point? Also, and let's let's start talking about Pritchard because he was one of the most promising players out of these two. And he came in and had a rookie season that you were like, okay, this guy can shoot the ball. And then we have the off season. We have the summer league where he was playing probably the best game out of any player in the summer league at, at one point. Like he was shooting the ball at a, a, a insane clip like he was playing basketball like he was playing like he looked like a guy that was going to be a contributor in my preview to this season i said aaron neesmith and peyton pritchard are going to be contributors they're going to be able to come out the bench give us 20 minutes a night and play good basketball and that has just not happened so now at this point i'm thinking do you stay patient with both of these players do you stay the course and just give them a little bit more time to kind of get acclimated now that they've had a full off season because you can't use that excuse anymore now that they've had a full off season now that they've had a full summer league now that they've had a full training camp to really get themselves together do you wait another year just to see how that kind of turns out do you wait because you know at this point i feel like you have to consider at that deadline what makes you a better team? Can you add another piece that makes this team better? And I think you can. Honestly, I think you can. I think that you package these two players, you can get a, a 
real contributor that can come in here and help your team in this stretch run, whatever run you're trying to make towards the postseason. But it, it kind of depends where the Celtics are at by the trade deadline. But I'm very intrigued about you know, where these players are going to go, where, what is their future? What are we doing with Aaron Neesmith and Peyton Pritchard? You know, what is the plans for these two players? I, I'm starting to think about it because they're completely out of the rotation. They don't play anymore. They don't, you know, Aaron Neesmith tried, they tried to give Aaron Neesmith a shot. Emi Odoka tried to give him a shot. He just isn't playing well when he goes out there. And then you, you talk about Peyton Pritchard who had the, um, I think he had like a broken nose he looked awful with the mask and then he's coming by he still can't play you know the chemistry with him and dennis and marcus it just doesn't work you know those three players can't be on the same floor can't be on the floor at the same time you know he doesn't play well with dennis either and you want to bring dennis off the bench but and then at the same time you can't play like he doesn't play well with peyton so it's like you're gonna choose the better of those two players the lesser of the evil and you're gonna go with dennis and it's just like you know that completely phases Peyton Pritchard out of the picture because he's not a natural too hard. And it's just weird. And now you're just like, what do we do with these two players? What do we do with them? And I, I'm very, I'm very intrigued to see what they're gonna do with Aaron Neesmith and Peyton Pritchard. These are two first round picks. These are two players that you can get something for at the deadline. I wonder if they trade these guys to a, um, a younger team, a team that's that's in transition to rebuilding that can give them more opportunities because I just don't see Aaron Neesmith and Peyton Pritchard getting opportunities on his team. Um, I know this is just the second year, but we just haven't seen it. When you've seen like Grant Williams, he's knocking down threes. He's making the best of his opportunities. That is how you get minutes on this team. I'm sorry. As much as, you know, I want to brag, we want to rag on Grant Williams and how he has, you know, a ton of bad plays sometimes it's just like he as many bad plays as grant has he has a bunch of other good plays really good plays and that is how you stay on the court that is how a coach can rely on you and you can become dependable I, i'm sorry and I, I i you know now that i'm thinking about it, you know aaron e. smith and peyton pritchard are just not reliable at this point and at that point you have to think about what makes your team better and where are you going with these two and how much value do they have can you continue to carry them to another season where they continue can they build up their value can they bring their value up where you'll be able to trade these players or is this the most value you'll ever get and it can only continue to go down here as much as you hang on to these players and i want you guys to tell me in the, in the comment section are these players fine do you think we should just hold on to these players and just give them more time to kind of learn and come into their own or should we package them should we send these guys away and see if we can get another contributor off this bench i want to know what you guys have to say um I'll be uploading more videos like this where I talk about more topics about the Celtics moving along as we go into the season. But this is something that I've been thinking about as we as we moved along as the season and as the rotations have started to kind of come together. Um, as always, guys, I have nothing left for the video. Like, comment, and subscribe. Peace.